So back in VS Code, we're going to navigate to the app component. And I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of this code because we're not going to use it for now. And the only thing I need to do in the constructor is to import the or inject the service that we created. So exactly what we did here in this constructor, where we injected the HTTP client as our dependency injection here, we're going to do something similar for this service here. Let's go back and inside the constructor as a private field, we're going to pass in the user service. I'm going to call it user service and you can call it whatever you want. And I'm going to define the type as the user service. So I'm going to do user service and make sure this is imported. And I'm going to remove this import that I'm not using. And now that we have this imported, we can actually use it to access those functions inside of this service. Let's go back and right below here. Let's say we're going to define a function on uh, get users. It's not going to take any parameters and it's going to return void. And what we want to do is to just call the service and then subscribe to the uh, function. So we're going to do this user service and then we're going to call get users and then we're going to subscribe. So here we're going to subscribe and then we know that we have three callbacks in this uh, subscribe. So we have the first one, which is going to return the response if everything is successful. And then here we want to execute some piece of code. So let's just for now, let's go ahead and just console log that response. So we're going to console that log and then we pass in the response. And then we're going to do something similar for the error and for the incomplete. So I'm going to just copy this and paste it twice. And I know for the last one, there's no parameters and I can just say uh, done getting users. And for the second one, I'm going to get an error and we can give it a type any for now. And you, you can just console log that as well. And another thing you have to notice is I didn't put any type on the response. And if you over over it, you can see that types could be smart enough to know that this is an array of user. So you notice that we're not calling this function in the constructor. We're not calling it anywhere. And what we can do is we can use the lifecycle hook. So the ng on init lifecycle hook, and then we can just call it on that init lifecycle hook which means that whenever this component is loaded then or is initialized, then it's going to go ahead and run those functions. So here I'm going to do implement on init. And then now I have to override this function, which is ng on init. I'm just going to go ahead and put it uh, a little bit down. And here I'm just going to call this function right here. So here I'm just going to remove this, call this on get users and make sure that this function is called whenever this component is initialized. So now if we go ahead and test the application, we should see something in the console because we're actually uh, console logging either the response or if we get an error and whenever we're done uh, getting everything from the observable. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the browser. And as you can see here, we already have the data, but I'm gonna go ahead and refresh it. And you can see we have the users here and you can see that's exactly the same data that we saw on the API website, as you can see here. So just to make sure that the other endpoints is also running, so let's go ahead and see if we can create another function. So I'm just gonna copy the first one and scroll down a little bit, paste it down, and I'm gonna call this get user, and this is gonna call the get user. And then again, we're gonna log the response, log the error if there's one, and we're gonna change this to done getting user because we know this is gonna get one user. And then now we can also call this function in the ng on init. So here, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this again, paste it down, remove the S, save everything, and then go back to the browser. And you can see that we got the first one with all the users. And then we got the first user with the ID one. And you can see here, that's the same user. So if we expand this, you can see the user with ID one is Lien, and we have the Lien here as well. So this is how you retrieve data. Uh, that's just a basic example of how you can retrieve data and then manipulate this data.